is a video about phlebotomy, about setting up your needles. So this is a hook. And this is a straight back retainer needle. This is a 22 gauge. So I did one. I'm going to do another one. So as you can see, the 22 gauge needle. All you do is remove the white cap like so. Twist and remove. Twist the hood on. Simple. All right. Next, we're going to do a 25 gauge butterfly vacuum vacuum tainer needle. So here's the hood once again. Here's the needle that you're gonna part of the needle that's gonna be attached to the hood. So what are you doing? It's just twisting it on. That's it. Alright. So what this is over here is a bigger gauge needle. This is a 21 straight back retainer needle. You do the same way you do with the 22 back retainer needle. You twist the hood bone. And it's a larger needle. Never recap a needle to prevent finger sticks. So once you're done with it, you take it and and there's the safety engaged. You don't want to engage the safety cap with your hand at all. All right, pause. Let me get something out this tube station. All right, let's get back to it. So the next thing I was going to show you is a 23 gauge butterfly needle. So you do those the same exact way. I'm not going to open that one. I'm just going to get this one that I already prepped up for me. And I'm going to untwist it so it comes out the same comes in a package the same exact way as a 25 gauge needle, nothing special. It's just a different size, that's all. So a 25 is smaller than a 23 gauge needle. The 23 gauge is, is pretty much an average size needle that most people um, use. It's really up to the phlebotomist on um, wet needle and which size needle to use. All right, so I did want to show y'all the Eclipse needles we use when we were doing blood cultures. So what we would do with this, I got one that's open already for this video. So what we do with this one, we would take this needle after we had already gathered the blood I'm going to demonstrate it with a uh, one milliliter syringe. So after we've already gotten the blood from either a butterfly or most of the time it's going to be a butterfly. So all you're doing is twisting it on the end. This one don't really have a groove because it's so small. It's a one milliliter. Um, I'll probably be able to show you the grooves better if I get at least a 5 ml. Nope, this is a 10. So as you see, this is a 10 ml syringe. A 5 ml syringe.
So, there you go. And some people also collect blood this way. They'll attach one of these needles right here um, to a syringe and pull back. Some people use these small ones right here so they can be able to um, get inside the needle better, inside the vein better, excuse me. All right, so that's pretty much it on um, connecting the needle to, to a syringe. I just wanted y'all to see that they turn. This one, this one in male, you don't have to turn, you just pushing it in there because it's such a small syringe. All right. That is that. These are blood culture bottles. So if, if they think a patient is septic, they'll order blood culture bottle. You'll have to collect the orange and a grain set. This is supposed to um, Put five mLs in each bottle. We'll talk about that on a later video if y'all interested. So this is a PD blood culture bottle. Bottle. They use. We use these more um, on babies, and um, maybe if you're in a critical situation where we can't collect the adequate amount amount of blood that we need, we might use those if we're in a dire situation like that. Um, these right here are PD blood containers, tubes. We call them PD tubes in the lab. This one is a, a lavender for a CVC or hematocrit or hemoglobin test. This one here is for chemistries. These are, this one is a hematology, this one is a chemistry. So what you do with this one is you put this funnel in there. And most times do these on um, for finger sticks. And you would then I poked someone on the side of their finger, kind of, I think, I want to say it's kind of a slanted motion on the side of the finger just like if you was getting a, um, a glucose and you would just scoop it up inside with using its funnel and that's how you do that so let's see what else do we have in here these are for heel sticks on babies. We also have this one as well. These are povidine, iodine pads. We use these on the one is allergic to alcohol. These are the small tourniquets for babies. So in some circumstances, they will draw um, blood from the baby's vein, which is difficult to do. I haven't did that before yet, but in the medical field, it's possible. Um, I wanted to show y'all the, the regular finger stick lancet. Those is a heel stick lenses. But I don't see one on my cart cart with that on it. So we're gonna move on. It's just the same as a um as a glucose as the one um if you have diabetes and you want to check your glucose levels. It's the same exact lens. Not the special. Yeah. 
Okay, so I guess I have to put some of those on my cart because I do not see any at all, you guys. Okay. So I can't show you that. As I say, it's stated, it's just a regular Nancy. Okay. So we also have these um, heel warmers here on the side. Let me get one of those out. Here's a heel warmer for infants. I also use them for when a patient is cold because if their um, body is cold, it makes it easier for the vein to um, collapse. So all you do with these is you just squeeze it. Sometimes it's a little hard, but you have to squeeze it and then you activate the heat. And that's it. Balled up in your hand and squeeze it like so. I'm not gonna do this one. Alright, that's pretty much that part of my car. You can see the straight needles. So of course these are just alcohol pads. Um you see the eclipse needles and things like this. This is a 21 eclipse needle. This is a 22, I want to say, or 25, 25, no, this one is a 23, 23, that clips me up. And this one is a 18, which is one of the biggest needles. Alright, so you can see the spray, you can see the butterflies. Of course, I'm just cotton balls, a bunch of tiny kits. You can see the PD hoods, blood culture, syringes, iodine pads, um, biohazard bags that we put our blood in. And last thing but not least is the blood suits. And we're just, just going to say it real quick. What is a wet man? Move on from that. So, it's a lactic acid too. This is a blood band to VDTA too. We use this for blood if you're getting a blood transfusion. This is a coag to blue top coag. This is a SST gold top to. This is a hematology. EDTA CBC2. This is the chemistry. Heparin. Lithium heparin. We also have a sodium heparin green tube that's got a, um, all green with no gold in the top. And this is um, the red serum clot activated So We also have a tall version of this one. Alright, those are the main special tubes. If y'all want to see TB goes or wondering how Plavix test works out, um, leave a comment down below and I will do a future video about that. So at the moment, that's about it. We don't want to do the basic stuff that's in the phlebotomy cart. And this is just some coban, some scratchy tape, but it won't hurt the um, elderly people fragile skin. That's all that is. Nothing special. The only thing about this tape is that you have to make sure you get it wrapped around to the next part in order for it to actually work. And this is, otherwise it won't. So just see, you have to make sure you get it pressed down good. Then it works great. Alright, we also use this for people that's on blood thinners to add, give an added pressure, but we still don't apply anything tight to no one skin, besides the tourniquet, of course. But I'm speaking in terms of long-term bandages. Alright, that is about it.